Are you feeling blessed this morning to be in Christ Jesus? What a blessing it is. And we have seen blessing after blessing in Romans chapter 8 as we've gone through these scriptures. There's no condemnation for us in Christ. We have the Spirit of God dwelling within our hearts to comfort us, to intercede for us, to, to cause us to be able to live a life that is pleasing to God. And so there's so much assurance that we have from God and from His Spirit. But what we want to talk about uh, this morning is that sometimes we're going to face suffering. Sometimes Christians are going to suffer. Sometimes Christians are going to groan in weariness and in pain. And I know that some of you today are feeling that groaning. You're feeling that suffering because you're going through things in life that are very, very difficult. I know several of you right now are going through difficulties, and they're very hard. And I know that many of you are going through things that maybe no one knows about, but the Lord knows. And what we want to do this morning is to find assurance in suffering. We need that help and assurance from the Lord. You know, if you look back at Romans chapter 8 and verse 17, he says there that if we're children, we're heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with Him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. The Christian life involves suffering. But we know that there is glory that is coming that far outweighs anything else. We need to set our mind on that glory that is coming, is going to be revealed to us one day. But yes, we do suffer in this life. Look down at Romans chapter 8 and verse 23. Paul says, And not only this, but we also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. You feel that groaning sometimes, don't you? Things are not good in life. And we groan, and we cry out, and we are perplexed, and we wonder what's happening to us. Even we who have the Spirit, Paul says, we do that sometimes. But we're waiting for that day when our adoption as sons of God will be fully completed. We're already children of God. We're already adopted as His children. One day it's going to be in its fullness, and that glory is going to be revealed to us, and it's going to be a wonderful day. So those things help us. And I, I want to show you something else here in Romans 8, 28 and 29 that should encourage us and help us when we're struggling, when we're suffering. Look at verse 28 with me. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good. To those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. What a glorious thought. I know a lot of you know this verse, and it's something that you build your life around, because it's so encouraging to think and to know that God is working in our lives. In every situation, He's working in our lives for our good and for our benefit. What a glorious thought. What a comforting thought that is, isn't it? And let's look at the passage this morning and break it down a little bit and talk about it and be encouraged by it. Look at verse 28. Again, he says, And we know... We know that God causes all things to work together for good. 
This is something that we can know for certain, that God is at work in my life, even when I don't understand, I don't see how everything's coming together. I can know. This, is, this should be a bedrock foundation of everything that we believe. I know that God is at work in my life. How do we know that? Let me ask you some questions. I want you to ponder these. How do we know? Well, does God love you? Do you believe that? Do you know that? Does he have your best interest at heart? Does he? Does God have your best interest at heart? Does God know your troubles? Oh, he knows. He knows exactly what you're going through. Does God care about your troubles? Does he care? Is he able to help you? He's able to help. So he knows and he cares and he loves you and he is able. He's more than able to help. Does God... Here's one I was thinking about. Does God have a thousands-year-long track record of helping His people, of doing what is best for His people, always? And so you look at all of this and you think, yes, I can know for certain that God is working in my life, even in the bad situations in life. I know that He's working. Well, look again at verse 28. We can know that. And what do we know? We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. God causes all things to work together for good. Again, even the bad things that happen to us. He causes that to happen. See, God is, God is at work in us. He's at work in situations. He's at work in everything that happens to us. Everything that happens to us. God is, you know, we, we look, at, look at our lives sometimes and we see, sometimes it looks like these broken, shattered pieces that things have happened to us and it feels like our life has been shattered, broken. And we wonder... Are these just random things that are happening to me? Why is this happening to me? I don't understand what is happening. But God, in the background, and we don't always understand it, we don't always know how it works, somebody might ask you, how does God do this? Well, I don't know. But God is infinitely powerful. God works in providential ways, and He's taking these broken pieces, what we think are broken pieces of our life, and He's gathering them together and building them into something beautiful. He does that with his power. He causes. He's got his hand directly in it. He causes all things to work together for good. All things. There is nothing that happens to us that God can't work out for our good. Do you believe that? We've got to get our hearts set on this. This is going to help us in times of trouble. And if you're not going through times of trouble in your life right now, it will come. As we know it comes, we all have to face suffering. Well, what does this mean, that God causes all things to work together for good? Let's talk about first what this does not mean. Does this mean that everything that happens to us is good? Is that what he's saying? No, it's that God will cause it to work out for good. Not that everything that happens to us is good. Terrible, evil things can happen to us. Evil things done by evil and terrible people can happen to us. And we're not saying, and God is not saying that, hey, those things were good. What He is saying is, I'll take those things and and turn them out for your good, for your benefit. We're not saying that God directly caused bad things and suffering to happen to us? That's a question that comes up. Did, did God 
look down upon me specifically and, and point at me and say, I'm going to cause this bad thing to happen to you? It's not necessarily that at all. We live in a fallen world, a broken world, stained with sin and with death, and bad things happen to everybody. Now, nothing happens without God's knowledge, and God allows things to happen to us at times, but does that mean He reached down and He caused it? No, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. So what does it mean? Again, that God will take all of these things, these bad things, all of the suffering and the trials, and He will work it into something good by His power. Does that give you assurance? Does that give you hope? It's a promise of God that we need to grab a hold of. Well, look again at verse 28. He says, God causes all things to work together for good. Well, what is it that is good? Who defines what is good? Um, Shouldn't this cause us to rethink what a blessing is? I mean, a verse like this can take our thinking about what is good and what is a blessing and can completely turn it on its head, right? But think about this. Let me give you some examples. Maybe you had an illness that you went through. And you think back to that illness and you think, I've never been closer to God than in those moments when I was pouring my heart out to God in prayer. I was so close to God. God was on my mind all the time. It brought me closer to Christ Jesus. And then you think, well, was that actually then a blessing? Was that illness actually a blessing? What about a, you get laid off from a job and, and it causes you in those moments to think, I, I'm, I'm reminded of, of the true riches. It's not monetary. I'm reminded of the true riches that God can, can provide. And, and I'm reminded that career is not everything in the world and making money is not everything in the world. And now you look at that, that layoff and you think, Maybe that was actually a blessing because God was working it together for my good. Maybe the fact that you grew up poor, you just had the bare essentials in life and nothing extra at all, and it was hard. But maybe if it taught you to be content with what you have, if it taught you to to be able to be happy with less in life, Was that poverty a curse or was it a blessing? See, if God is working all things together for good, then that totally redefines what what is a blessing in life. It turns everything on its head because the bad things that happen to us while they are bad and while God didn't directly cause them, He's taking them and turning them into blessings for us. He's putting those pieces together. We need to begin to see the blessings, even in bad situations. We need to learn to see that there is nothing, nothing that God can't take and turn it into our benefit and for our good. We need to learn to see that nothing can happen to us, that God can't work together for our growth and for our spiritual well-being and for the good of His kingdom. Well, who is this promise for? It's for those who love Him. Look again at 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. This promise, this assurance, you know, it's not for everybody. It's for the children of God who love God and who are called according to His purpose. See, people outside of Jesus, while God loves them and cares for them very much, 
They don't have this promise. This is for His people. It's for those who love God. It's for those who are called according to His purpose. We can know that God is working everything out. But for those outside, they can't know that. Sometimes the terrible things that happen are just terrible things. But for us, it's different. But now we have to ask ourselves the question, do you love Him? Do you love God? The promise is for those who love Him. How do you know if you love God? Do you delight in Him? Is He everything to you? Or do you is He the sweetest thing to you, this relationship that you have with your Heavenly Father? And if we love Him, that love that we have for Him will cause us to obey Him, to keep His commandments. That's how you know if you love God. And God looks at us, and He sees us loving Him and giving Him our all, and He says, I will work everything out for you, even though you can't understand it. You can't see how it's going to work. I'm, trust me, God says, I'm working everything out for your benefit. For his purpose. See, it's for those who are called according to his purpose. That forces us to ask the question, what is God's purpose for us? God has a purpose for you and for me. What is his purpose? Look at verse 29 and we'll see it. We'll find out. Verse 29, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that we would be the firstborn among many brethren. Let me take just a moment to talk about that word foreknew and the other word predestined, uh, because sometimes people will take those in the wrong sort of way. The fact that God foreknew those whom he foreknew in verse 29 It's that God, before time began, He chose a people. He chose that those who are in Christ Jesus, see, a people, He would love those people. He would bless those people. He foreknew them in a way that He was going to establish relationship. We're talking about a group of people. Who are those people? They're Christians, people who have obeyed the gospel and come into Christ. God foreknew before time began that those would be His people. So this isn't about God foreknowing and choosing certain ones for salvation and choosing certain ones for damnation. What a monstrous doctrine that is, that God would choose beforehand that you are condemned to hell and there's nothing you can do about it. That doctrine is out there and it's monstrous. That's not God. So it's simple here. God foreknew. He he knew that he would love a people, that he would be there and bless a people That's the church, the people of God. And for those people, he says, he predestined. It's just a word that that means God decided beforehand. Look at 29. He predestined these people to become conformed to the image of his son. God decided that this group of people that he was going to establish relationship with, they would be conformed to the image of Jesus. And here we see the purpose of God. Here we see how God defines what is good. He's trying to mold us and conform us into the image of His Son. God's purpose. God's purpose for us is not that we would be happy all the time. I mean, that's kind of what we want, isn't it? I, want to, I don't want to have any problems. I, I want to be happy all the time. I want things to go my way all the time. But that's not necessarily God's purpose. God's purpose is not that we would be comfortable all the time. God's purpose is not that we would never face challenges in life. God's purpose is not that we would never have to exercise patience in a situation. God's purpose is for our ultimate good, and these things would not be for our ultimate good. No, God is working all things together to conform us to the image of His Son. He is orchestrating these things. He's pulling everything together, even all the bad stuff, 
And his purpose in us is to make us more like Jesus Christ. That we would think more like Jesus. That we would act more like Jesus and speak like him. That we would take part in his life and in his light. That's what God is concerned about. Our eternal salvation. God's concerned about our souls. He's concerned about getting us to heaven with him. And sometimes we don't understand that. We, we want everything to be comfortable and easy. And God would say to us, that's not for your ultimate good. His purpose, the reason why he allows us to go through trials, is that we would grow into the image of Christ. Christ. And so that means, brothers and sisters, there is purpose in our suffering. Do you believe that? There's purpose in our suffering, even though it is hard and it's heart-wrenching and it just weighs us down sometimes. We have to go back to the promises of God and remember, there is purpose in my suffering. God is working it all out for my benefit. Does that encourage your heart? Does that help you to stand when things get hard? To trust your loving Father who knows, who cares, who sees, and who is able to help you. Even when we don't understand. Even when we don't see how everything's going to fit together. Would you trust God? That God is working for your good. So this morning... Are you suffering? I know some of you are mightily. Are you groaning? And what do you need to do in these moments? Keep on loving God. Keep on loving God. Keep on trusting God. What do you need to know in these moments? That God is working all things together for your good. Let's believe Him. Let's trust Him. If you need prayers this morning, we would be happy to pray with you. And if you need to respond to the invitation of Christ to put him on in baptism for the forgiveness of your sins, we invite you to do that now or at any time. And I do mean any time. Grab somebody and ask. Let us know. We would love to help you. If there's any need, feel free to come while we stand and sing.